Hey there everyone, it's Misty here. Welcome to a video. Um, this is not the video I thought I would be filming this week. Um, I am gonna share with you um, what happened the days leading up to um, me going into the hospital for a couple of days. So um, if you aren't following me on Facebook or Instagram, you may have missed that. But um, yeah, let's talk about it. So um, the last time I saw you guys, I was goal setting, I was doing keto, you know, I was back on track, I was doing well, and then all of a sudden, um, on Saturday, things just kind of went to shit. Um, I had been having issues in my lower back and in my left leg, I think I mentioned that. Like, I thought I was having sciatica, um, going down my left leg, where it was like pain and then like a pulling sensation all in my left leg. Everything has been mostly in my left leg. So on Saturday, I woke up and I started having issues with my right leg um, and my left leg was fine, but I started having like numbness and tingling in my right leg. And as the day progressed, um, we tried to get in the pool Saturday night and I couldn't because I couldn't put any weight on my right leg because my right leg was numb and it kept trying to collapse underneath me. So when I woke up on Sunday, um, I could just barely, I think I mentioned in that video um, that I posted on Tuesday, the vlog I posted, maybe Monday, I could just barely walk that day. But I went grocery shopping with Rob so I could make sure I had some stuff for Lily because I had my 13 year old niece this week. And by the end of that day, I couldn't stand and I could barely walk. And when I woke up on Monday, I couldn't walk at all. Um, and I've been in so much pain. So Monday morning, I woke up and I went ahead and called and rented a wheelchair. Um, and because I just, I couldn't walk. I couldn't stand up straight. I couldn't walk. Um, like I couldn't feel my legs. Like I couldn't feel them. Like I could, if you know that sensation of when your legs are asleep, that's what my legs have been feeling like. And I couldn't put any weight on them because I can't feel them underneath me. So um, Rob and I, was, we were supposed to go to Oklahoma on Tuesday to go see my endocrinologist. And I told him, I was like, if I wake up on Tuesday and this is just as bad, I was like, we're going to have to go to the emergency room. Because at this time, I still thought I was having sciatica. I thought I was having issues with my sciatic nerve. I thought if I went to the hospital, they'd give me a steroid shot you know, or put me on a steroid and send me on my way. So I woke up Tuesday and whoa, it was even worse. Um, I couldn't, I could barely get myself in the shower. Um, and I was having issues again, standing or putting any weight on my legs and lift, like I couldn't lift my legs. I mean, it was just, It, it had just gotten to the point where I was trying to get around my house in the wheelchair and trying to get around my house in the walker, and it just wasn't working out. So we went to Texas Presby um, Tuesday morning. I think we got there like at 6.30 a.m. And we were already all up. You know, we were supposed to go to Tallahena. Like I said, we we're going to leave at 6.30. So we went straight, or um, yeah, Tallahena is where I go. <clears throat> so... We get there and I tell the guy what's going on and he's like, you know, have you had an MRI? And I'm like, no, I've been trying to have one. So he's like, well, we're gonna go ahead and get you one. And I was like, you know, can you go ahead and sedate me? So they sedated me, they um, sent me back and did an uh, MRI. And when he came out, he's like, you have a ruptured disc in your back. And they called the um, neurosurgeon I had seen last Tuesday. Um, on what day was that? Let's see, the 8th. So, um, and he's like, he wants to see you right away. And I was like, okay. So we left the emergency room and this was probably like 11. We got there at 6.30 and, and they hadn't given me any pain medicine or nothing. I had taken my terminal at like 5 a.m. No pain management, nothing. Like I was in so much pain and all weekend I'd been doing e -stem, I've been doing hot and cold, like I've been doing everything that I could to get what I thought was this nerve to calm down. And like I said, when we went to the hospital on Tuesday, Rob's like, what do you think they're gonna do? And I was like, I think they'll probably just give me a steroid shot or something. So we get to the neurosurgeon's office 
and if you've been following me, you know, I had met him before. I saw the nurse practitioner and he was like, I didn't, he was like, I think you need surgery right now. I think you, and, but he wanted to do it at the hospital where I've had so many issues. And I was like, you know, are you affiliated with a different hospital? I said, because I can't go back there. I said, the four times I've been there, I said, I've had issues all four times. And I said, I just do not trust the hospital with my care. I said, I trust you. I said, but I don't trust them. So he was like, no, that's the only hospital I'm affiliated with. But he also said, you know, that he would be worried about doing it there too, because he would want a bigger hospital, a bigger team, and somebody who was more adept, number one, at dealing with someone my size, but also somebody who has myasthenia gravis. So he was like, I want you to go to UT Southwestern through the emergency room. And he said, and I said, are they going to turn me away when I get there? And he was like, no. I said, are you going to call ahead? And he's like, no. He's like, they shouldn't, there shouldn't be any issue. They're going to take you back, do surgery. You know, there shouldn't be any issue. He said, they're going to look at your MRI and they're going to know immediately what course of treatment you're going to need. And I said, okay. So Rob's like, what are we going to do? I said, we're going to go have some lunch. <laughs> I said. Then we're gonna go pack a bag. And I said, then we're gonna head over to UT Southwestern. And that's exactly what we did. We went and had lunch. And then I came home, because UT Southwestern is a little over an hour drive for us. And so it wasn't, you know, you, Texas Presby is maybe 15 minutes at the most. And of course the other hospital that I was always having issues with was right across the street. So, it's like we knew I knew this wasn't going to be an easy commute for us and if I was admitted I knew it wouldn't be an easy commute for Rob to have to make you know the back and forth trip to bring me stuff so I was like okay so I packed socks with the things on the feet because the socks at the hospital never fit <laughs> Um, I packed a little fan. I have a little fan that clips onto the bed that I gotten years ago, like 10 years ago at a hospital visit. Um, I packed like my iPad and my chargers. I packed, you know, a dress to wear home because here I am going, thinking I'm going in to have back surgery and I'm like, I don't want to wear pants, you know, we'll just throw on a dress, something real easy to get me home in. Um, took my own pillow. Um, what else did I take? Earbuds. Um you know, an extra pair of panties, those kinds of things. So get there and they wanted to, they told me initially to go to Parkland and I told Rob, I was like, we are not going to Parkland. And if you're unfamiliar, if you're in the, if you're not in the Dallas area, Parkland is basically, um, it's not a free hospital cause they still, but it's where, where anybody can go. So even if you don't have insurance, um, or whatever you're seeing, but it's where they take like almost everybody, you know, gunshot victims, those, those kinds of things. I'm like, we're going to be there for hours and hours and hours. So we went to the Clements emergency department or whatever, and we get there and I'm like, oh crap, we're going to be here for, uh, for, and we were probably there a good hour before they took us back, which actually wasn't that bad. Um, the biggest emergency room I've ever been in, they had like 42 beds, 47 beds, huge. So they get us back there and then um, I'm seen by a resident who was Doogie Howser. <laughs> those of you who are old enough to know who Doogie Howser is, um, he was, he just looked so young. And the funny thing was, I mean, Lily's 13, so she's boy crazy and he was cute. I mean, he was cute, he was a cute little thing. I was like, I'm gonna put him in my pocket and bring him home. So I was giving her a hard time about taking his picture and gramming, you know, putting him on the gram and those kinds of things. But, um, so anyway, he was like, you know, um, he's like, I'm going to defer this to the orthopedic surge, you know, orthopedics or spine, whoever was on call that night. And unfortunately that guy was over at Parkland doing what he do. So we waited probably, I probably finally saw him. So we finally got back like at 5 45 6 o'clock and I finally saw the guy from Parkland at like 11 ish and then um they finally decided that they were going to do a neck MRI and then some x-rays um after midnight so I went ahead and sent Rob and Lily home and because they'd already decided at that point they were going to go ahead and admit me so they did a neck MRI um and I got burned on the MRI machine um, I have a burn on my right breast and my right side. Um, I don't know if the tech walked away 
or what, but he gave me an emergency ball and I was squeezing that thing. I was yelling. I was kicking the, kicking my legs, everything that I could do because I could feel it burning my skin. And then, um, get back and they had sedated me for that too. I was like, you guys don't have to sedate me for all these MRIs. I'm like, especially for that one. Cause good Lord, it was like right here in my face. So I get back and I'm still kind of loopy from sedation and this guy comes in, the x-ray tech comes in, gets me and he was a fucking asshole. Oh my gosh. Like every time I think I've met like the worst asshole in medicine, someone is like, here, I'm going to one up them. He like, if you've, if you've never had a ruptured disc or a herniated disc, I mean, my disc in my back was pressing into my spinal cord. I could not feel my legs. It was the most intense pain I've ever felt in my life. And this guy was, he literally told me to suck it up, buttercup. Um, and I should, I need to roll over onto his bed, suck it up, buttercup. Um, stop whining. I mean, he was the worst. I complained about him for two days to anybody that would listen. And so I got x-rays, I got back and I was bawling. And the nurse, my nurse, Kenneth, he was amazing. He came in and he was like, what's the matter? What happened? Who do I need to kill? And I told him about the, because I'm a really easy patient. <laughs> like, I'm super simple. I'm really laid back. You know, I know it's going to be a long way. You know, I don't really, you know, I'm not going to give you a whole bunch of trouble as long as you, you know, check in with me every once in a while. They'd already given me pain medication. They'd sedated me. Um, they'd given me morphine. He was like, do you want morphine or do you want codeine? I'm like, whatever's going to work the fastest. So they'd give me an IV with morphine. And then, you know, five or six hours later, they'd give me codeine. So I was, you know, my pain was being managed. So I was fine. So when he came in he, and we'd been joking around, he was giving Lily a hard time about being so boy crazy. I mean, we'd just been having a good time with him. And so, and Rob had already left. And like, I was just feeling very vulnerable and just, I mean, that guy was, to, I was like, I, w I just was like, I'm completely... He was like, I cannot believe, I said, he, I said, he was just treating me less than human. I'm like, here I am. I can, he didn't offer to help me onto the table. You know, he didn't offer any help, me any help whatsoever. And I could barely move. And I said, the suck it up buttercup was what really kind of did me in for that. So had the x-rays, they finally um, came and transported me to a different building. So um, UT Southwestern is huge and um different um what are what's the word i'm looking for um like neurology and orthopedics have their own building not a floor a building <laughs> so i was transported by ambulance to their building you know got into a bed was you know and started on pain management and stuff like that so the next morning I finally saw like the attending doctor and they were like, you know, we're just waiting for, you know, a spine doctor to come by and talk to you. Um, uh, OT came by, physical therapy came by and I told the guys, I was like, listen, I was like, I can't, I can't even get out of bed. I couldn't, I couldn't get out of bed without help. Like I couldn't walk. We were literally transporting me into a wheelchair. They were wheeling me into the bathroom so I could go to the restroom. They were wheeling me back out. I was transporting myself to sit on the edge of the chair and then Rob or the nurses were having to lift my legs and put them on the bed. I mean, this is how bad this was on Tuesday and Wednesday. So I finally saw the doctor like at, I don't know, seven o'clock Wednesday, seven o'clock Wednesday. And he was like, <laughs> He was like, yeah, I'm, he's like, I'm not going to do surgery. He's like, this isn't, you know, this isn't, um, you're not peeing. Like basically I hadn't lost control of my bladder and I hadn't lost control of my bowels. So he didn't believe it was severe enough for surgery. And so he was like, but I'm going to keep you till Sunday. He's like, we'll do some physical therapy. You know, we'll see how you do with pain management. He said, and then we'll reevaluate on Sunday. He said, I'm on call on Sunday, so if you're better, then we'll send you home. And if not, we'll probably plan on operating on Wednesday. And I was just like, 
<laughs> After he left, I told Rob, I was like, I don't know who to believe or what to believe. Because at this point, it's like, here's the neurosurgeon I saw who was like, you need to have surgery right away. You know, you don't want to damage the... Um, his. He told me that if I let it go, I could have permanent nerve damage and lose sensation in my legs. And my whole entire thing this whole entire time has been, I don't care if it takes surgery or whatever. I just want to be able to walk. Like, I don't care. Just make, fix me. I'm broken. I want to be able to walk. So that was Wednesday night. So I sent Lily and Rob home like at seven or so. They came in, they gave me my pain pills. I ate, um, they um, gave me a flexor rail and I slept and I earplugs was the other thing. If you ever stay in a hospital, just throw some earplugs in. <laughs> so the nurse the next morning, I woke up probably about 536 and she came in, she's like, honey, she's like, you slept. I was like, mm-hmm. And she said, I came in a couple of times just to make sure you're breathing. She's like, you barely woke up for us to do your vitals. I'm like, yeah. I said, I, I said it's the earplugs. I was like, I, you know, bef you guys can come in and do whatever you need to do, and I can just sleep right through it. So woke up that morning, had some breakfast, um, and then, but the late, the night before, bef um, was it the night before? Yeah, before I went to sleep the night before, um, I had my tech. I was like, let me see if I can walk to the bathroom because I'd started getting sensation back in my legs. So in my bathroom was literally like, I don't know, eight steps away. So I got up and leaning on the wall, I was able to walk to the bathroom, but she had to come get me with the wheelchair. So when the um, PT guys came by yesterday morning, I was like, yeah, let me go ahead and try to walk and so they brought a walker in and I was able to make it halfway down the hallway. Um, I was giving them a hard time. I was like, I can't believe you guys are taking me out in public. I haven't had a shower, I haven't put my face on. You know, just trying to have fun and not deal with the fact that I was in the damn hospital again. So um, OT came in and they, you know, showed me how to put my socks on. I mean, it was just, it was a pretty decent morning. And then all of a sudden, here comes a spine surgeon. And he's like, I know you saw my other colleague last night. He's like, but um, you're seeing me today. And I was like, okay. <laughs> he said, you know, I think you just need to do some physical therapy and um, some pain management. He said, I know that you're scheduled to see somebody um, in a couple of weeks. He's like, well, I think we'll just do that. And then if you're better, good. If you're not, we'll go ahead and talk about surgery then. And I was like, okay. I was like, okay, and still at this point, I thought we were still, I was still staying in the hospital till Sunday. I was still gonna do physical therapy in the hospital. You know, I was like, okay, great, whatever. Um, I had ordered lunch, you know, I was getting, you know, in. And so, um, and I had just been joking around. I'm like, I'm ready to go home. Cause I was ready to go home. Nobody wants to be in the hospital. Nobody wants to be in the hospital. So, um, and especially somebody who can't, you know, you're not allowed, I was a fall risk, so they actually had an alarm on the bed that if I got up, they would, and I didn't do it. I didn't do it after we learned the first time. Rob was just gonna help me to the bathroom. They were like, oh no, 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 he can't. We have to be the one to take you to the bathroom. And I said, okay. So like an hour later, the doctor comes in. He's like, okay, I'm gonna send you home. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, how how did we go from needing back surgery to going home like in the span of 24 hours? But um, he said, you know, we're going to send um, home health, you know, to your house. We'll do physical therapy there. You know, you're already scheduled. I, I'm already scheduled to see the spine doctor on the 27th anyway. He's like, you know, so we'll just go from there. You know, if you get worse, come back to the hospital. If you don't, you know, just go to the appointment. And I said, okay. So <clears throat> called Rob because he was working from home and he had initially taken the whole week off because we thought we were, I was going to have back surgery. So when they were like, no, we're just going to keep you and we're going to play it by ear. I told him, I was like, just go ahead and go back to work. And then we had Lily on top of it. And so luckily his, um, her other aunt, um, was able to come and get her and take her back home. So, um, Rob came, I called him and I was like, uh, guess who's going home? And he's like, you? I was like, yeah. He's like, what? I was like, I don't know. I don't know. Just come get me. So I finally, I was discharged probably around three o'clock yesterday. I think, I think it was around three o'clock yesterday. And, um, 
when the nurse came in and discharged me, I was like, did he write a prescription for pain medication? And she's like, no. She's like, let me go ask. So she went and asked and she came back. She's like, I could tell she was mad. I was like, what happened? She's like, he wants you to reach out to your pain management doctor. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm like, <laughs> I was like, it could take me three or four days to get a prescription from my pain management doctor because I wasn't on just Tramadol when I was in the hospital because this pain is beyond Tramadol. Like this is like the absolute worst pain of my life. I would have to take Tramadol every three hours to stay on top of the pain in my back. So, um, and I'm like more movement since I've been home than I was doing in the hospital because I had to walk from the car into the house to the couch, from the couch to the bathroom, from the bathroom to the bed. I mean, that's, you know, way more distance than I walked in the hospital. So anyway, um, went to bed, woke up in the middle of the night, just almost in tears because I couldn't move. I couldn't roll over. I couldn't get on my side. I couldn't do anything without having a sharp pain in my back. And it's like, I don't want to be home and aggravate this because the guy didn't send me home with pain meds. So, um, reached out to my pain meds where a doctor and was like, Hey, listen, you know, I was just, and I reached out to the pain management doctor that's affiliated with UT Southwestern and was like, listen, I was just admitted, didn't release. Can you please send me something for pain? Send me whatever I was taking while in the hospital, but just enough until I see you again. Because that's what I told the doctors in there. I was like, the guy, the kid, Doogie Houser, Brian, his name was Brian, um, Tuesday night, I was like, you know, I I don't like to take pain, stronger pain meds. I just don't like to. I don't like the way they make me feel. You know, I oh, and I don't, <clears throat> I just don't like the way they, they make me feel. But there comes a point when you're like, okay, yes, I would much rather feel better than worry about, you know, anything else in that moment in time. So, <sighs> It's been a struggle. The struggle is real. So that's where I'm at. I've got a herniated or ruptured disc. I guess they mean the same thing. Um, I'm waiting for home health to call today to set up um, physical therapy. And um, I go see, I follow up on the 27th. Um, I'm not going back to the neurosurgeon I saw on Tuesday who wanted to immediately perform surgery. Um, like a total rob, it's like, I don't want somebody who's just quick to cut me open. I mean, if he'd even suggested that, um, sorry guys, my nose is itching. <laughs> if he'd even suggested that, you know, physical therapy and just, you know, taking a few days to see if it would get better would have, um, worked, I would have been a-okay with that, but he scared the holy crap out of me was bawling on the way to the hospital like I don't want to have surgery I don't want to have surgery I don't want to have back surgery I'm not ready to have back surgery I don't want to have back surgery so I don't think I'm gonna bother seeing him again I think I will just go ahead and see the guy on the 27th at UT Southwestern um, and go from there um, I also need to call my regular doctor today for a follow-up and I know hopefully he will be able to give me something even if the pain management, if I don't hear from them. Um, I did get a refill on like my lidocaine. I got a spray and some more of my Declovenec um, topical. So I had Rob spray me down this morning. I'm like, spray me down. Maybe that will help for a little bit. And I can use that up to three or four times a day. So that's the goal. And that's, that's my life. That's what's been happening this week. Um, not what I expected happened whatsoever. Like I said, everything had been in my left leg. I thought I was just sciatica. I didn't realize. And everybody's like, did you fall? And I'm like, no, I didn't do anything. This just kind of came out of the blue. It's like, how do you, how, did, what happened? What happened? No one can tell me what happened or, you know, anything like that. So just have to be really, really careful over the next, over the next few months, I guess. I don't know. So yeah, so that's it. <sighs> Um, I was hoping to get a shower yesterday at the hospital before I came home, but I didn't um, because they had to order a um, shower chair 
and it was gonna take 24 hours and then of course I went home. So I'm gonna to try to take a shower today. Hopefully later today, uh, you know, I'll have some pain meds in me and <clears throat> some of this topical on me a couple of times and I'll feel a bit better, but we'll see. So as far as weighing in and stuff, We'll have to take care of that next week. <laughs> I can't even stand up straight to get on a scale. And that was another thing. It's like, I cannot stand up straight. Over the weekend, I could stand up about halfway. And then um, I'm a I can go a little bit further today. But I cannot stand up straight. I cannot. I cannot. So, that's the whole story. From start to finish and other than that jackass and x-ray it was a I had a good visit everybody was kind caring supportive um I didn't feel not heard I didn't feel not listened to um I didn't feel like any of the doctors you know were fat phobic or had any kind of fat bias um they me you know several times i was asked if i wanted a bigger bed you know if i felt okay in that bed i was like yeah that's fine this bed's plenty big um so the nurses were lovely i had one nurse that wasn't the best but luckily she wasn't my nurse she was just assisting so she went on about her merry little way and i didn't have to worry about it but yeah um like i said the only thing is ut southwestern is big big and it's way far away but yeah so hopefully we can avoid the back back surgery that's my goal um it's just to kind of take it as easy as possible the next couple of weeks um hopefully by the end of the weekend i can start cooking again that was another thing i mean i haven't been able to stand up to cook oh and i got a walker let me turn you see if you guys can see it um I was using one yesterday in the hospital and I told the nurse, I was like, or the patient care coordinator or whatever, I was like, well, I have a rollator. The problem is I can't use the rollator in the house very much because it's, and same thing with the wheelchair, like the wheelchair is too wide for the doorways in my house. So um, they let me take this one home. I'm sure they built the insurance $5,000, but that's another thing. I want to come up with a way to um i have to make some cards or sell some cards some stickers or something so i can start putting money aside for these hospital bills so be on the lookout for <laughs> me spamming you about cards and stuff i don't want to do a gofundme um that's just i just don't like to do gofundmes but you know i, I don't mind selling stuff so we'll see how that goes but yeah so that's it guys thank you so much for joining me um, like I said, I do hope to be back on, you know, as back to normal as I can be over the next few days. Um, rebooting keto, because of course I didn't do keto in the hospital. I probably could have. Um, if I tried real hard, but I didn't try real hard. I'm not going to lie. Keto and eating and... I mean, even just eating, those were, it wasn't even on my brain. Like, I wasn't even hungry, mostly in the hospital. I was just, it just was, the pain was just too much. I just was more concerned about not hurting and being able to use my legs than I was about anything else. So, yeah. But anyway, that's it, guys. Thank you so much to everyone who left kind comments on Instagram and Facebook. I really do appreciate you, <laughs> those of you who offered to come hang out with me. Um, I appreciate you too. But yeah, I'll get back to vlogging and back to posting videos hopefully next week. Um, we'll see. I don't know. Like I said, we'll just have to play it by ear. Um, it's 7 right now. I'm going to wait until 8. I'm going to take a Flexoril. Um, they were also giving me that in the hospital. Um, I'm going to take a Flexoril and then probably take some more CBD oil. Someone had asked in the comments how I'm liking the CBD oil. The one I'm taking right now from Hemp Bombs, the 2,000 milligrams, um, I don't know if it helps with pain. It just knocks me out and it helps me sleep. So um, that's a win for me. 
So, which is kind of funny because it has MCT oil in it, but mm -mm, it makes me sleep. Oh no. So I'm going to take some more of that and um, probably get back in bed because I do a little bit better when I'm laying somewhat flat. We have a wedge pillow. I'm going to have Rob put the wedge pillow. Elevate me a little bit. So whatever keeps pressure off that disc. I think it's L3. L3, L4, L4, L5. It's L, I think it's L3, L4. I don't remember exactly. All I know it's my lower back. It hurts like a mofo. <laughs> so yeah. All right, guys. Thanks so much for joining me. Sorry that you had to deal with this mess, but it is what it is, honey. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.